Great Britain, seemingly stylish and sophisticated. A modern nation, sparkling and bright. But some people will tell you a different story. It's rank, isn't it, mate? It's rank. I'm covered in your feces. The people who clean up after us see another country. One filled with mountains of our muck. They have to face. I've never seen anything like it, mate. Listen, I'm not here to pass judgment, but you wouldn't put a dog in here, would you? You know, he couldn't carry on living like this. People just think that, oh, well, throw that in the river and it'll vanish. But it doesn't, but we have to pick it up. The lives of the men and women who do our dirty work is an adult bed bug. Reveal our national obsession with cleanliness. Do not touch the china, some of its prices. Okay. It doesn't really need cleaning every two days, but the person who owns this, they like it perfect all the time. But they get to see how filthy we really are. A lady's knickers in the toilet. Why would you do this here? You don't do it at home. Our cleaners know the nation's dirty secrets. This is how Britain looks to them. Every morning across the country, Britain's cleaners leave the comfort of their own homes and get ready to head round to ours. Michelle and Zoe, I just want to sort out your jobs with you, okay? You've got your usual regular lady, and don't forget the spirit level. She likes to see the pictures being absolutely level. That's really important. All right, lovely. Then. Okay. Your second client, you just got to be aware they do start on the cocktails quite early. Okay. okay. Britain's households call on an army of workers to deal with their grime. Preparing to face a day tackling the nation's muckiest problems would put many of us off our cereal. That's what rat catters have for breakfast. Especially knowing exactly what the day holds in store. Oh my God. What is this? Is it pigeon stuff? Pigeon poo. Is there someone living in this? Yeah. Really? He's got holes oh everywhere. Oh my God. One in ten British households employ a domestic cleaner. Yes, yeah, this one here. This smart London suburb is typical of many across the country. These maids get to see inside some very pleasant homes. Right, this is the drawing room. As you can see, pale carpet. Got shoe covers for you. You've made sure that your feet are really clean, which is great. Do not touch the china. The china. It is some of its prices. Okay. Chandeliers, as you know, specialist, we don't touch those. This client has been with us for quite a few years and he is really on it. Don't touch the uh, screens. Make sure you do under the bed. Cobwebs, cornices, mouldings. And use a little toothbrush on it. He will know whether it's been vacuumed diagonally or vertically or horizontally, he'll know that, which I think is lovely. I really do. It's just amusing that someone is so connected with our homes, a much loved home. By the 1970s, most middle class homes like these had exchanged their servants for vacuum cleaners. But with more money and less time, having a professional cleaner is back in fashion once more. And these people know just how fussy we can be. You have to take all the products, all the nail varnishes off and put them back how the ladies actually left them. Because when you finish, she'll come up and check and tell you which colour should be well. <laughs> Don't forget, everything's back in order. But not every home receives this level of care and attention. A look behind some front doors can reveal what happens when we let standards slide. Right, let's get some overalls on. On this ordinary street, 
Pest controllers Jim and Harry are facing an extraordinary problem. <laughs> We're going to need them. They're here to evict the unwelcome visitors from this large terraced home. This house is something special. It was by far the worst house that we've seen where someone is actually living inside. I mean, you've got to keep reminding yourself that someone lives here. It ain't, it ain't a squat. It's not a derelict property. The guy lives here. Oh, it stinks from out here, honestly. Look at that ladder. That, that is really, really strong. I mean, look how far we are from the front door. That is awful. Yeah, let's get them masks on, mate. Straight the way through, mate. All right. This property is home to a reclusive man in his 50s. It is a remarkable illustration of what can happen if a pest problem gets out of control. Oh, Jim, look at that. That is caked. This is some kind of sofa cushion or something, or a pillow, and that is just accumulation of pigeon fouling. Look at the state of that. That's yeah. bad, isn't it? That's what? just, uh, they've been sitting there and... Yeah, there's one there. There's one sat there. They're just shitting on the door, aren't they? There are 18 million feral pigeons in Britain, and they all need somewhere to live. A few moved into this loft several years ago, when a hole in the roof wasn't fixed. Now the numbers have swelled. The weight of their droppings has brought down the ceilings and the pigeons have emerged to take over the house. Oh, look at the state of that. Oh, mate, this is... The bath's awful, isn't it? Look. Well, you, you can't, you can't you bath, can you? can't bath, you can't look wash. Look at the sink. Jeez. Oh, That's mate. just years of... Look, look how thick that is, look, look. That's just sitting in the sink. Yeah, I'll put it back in there for now. The council have had to issue a notice to force the owner of this house to clean the problem up. The whole house is falling apart. To be honest with you, you wouldn't put a dog in here, would you? Do you know what I mean? If you was keeping an animal in these conditions, you'd be nicked for, you know, animal cruelty. All right. Many of Britain's homes may appear rather cleaner with their neatly clipped gardens and polished door brass. But beneath even the leafiest suburban street hides a remarkable mess. There are 72,000 kilometers of sewers in the Northwest alone, enough to stretch twice around the globe. And many of them are clogged up with household junk. People flush a lot of things down the sewers that they're not supposed to. Wipes, uh, sanitary towels, uh, fat and grease. We found sex toys down manholes before now. Um, cats, hamsters, gerbils, you know, fam family pets. You find all sorts down there, really. Well, I'm just doing a quick safety check now. Mick and his colleague Sean spend their working lives down our sewers, cleaning up after us. But going down there is risky. Our sewage can produce lethal gas. We get explosive gases, you get gases which can asphyxiate, yeah. Basically, it, it's deadly down there. Go forward, that's bit. Off you go. You're looking like Mick, all right? Messy. 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 Nice. <laughs> Enough busy then. Definitely. Yeah. The nation's sewermen spend their lives beneath our pavements, shoveling out whatever rubbish we flush away. Sweet corn, peas, <laughs> yeah. sanitary towels and wipes. Baby wipes. Plenty of them, you know, it's what they're flushing down the sewer. Cotton uh, earbuds. It's like a cake paste. It's best. Oh, that's that's back, that would block a sewer in no time. It's impossible to know where pockets of gas may be lurking. Yeah, it's starting to smell a bit now, isn't it? Yeah, it stinks. Working beneath these streets means facing a constant risk. You're right down there, guy. 
guys. Yeah, yeah. mate. That's better. That's much better. What's, what time is it? Is that the right time? It is. It's 10.33, it? yeah. So that, that just shows you that this house is lived in. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. The mess made by the pigeons is throughout the first floor of this house. But beneath it are signs of how life might have been before the birds moved in. This is what, what makes it all quite poignant in a way, isn't it? I mean, you know, you've got the little baby's cot, you know. I mean, at some time this was... A real proper family, family home, home, weren't it? Yeah. And now it's just, it's just. I mean, I'm hoping by what we do here over the next couple of days, please God, it will start to give uh, this gentleman his life back because this has gone on too long, isn't it? But reclaiming this house from these feathered squatters won't be an easy task. How many are still left up there, Jim? About thirty. Really, Jim, is there that many up there? There are 25 million households in Britain. And more than one in four of them are made up of people living alone. Several weeks ago, Unnoticed by the neighbours on this council estate, a private tragedy took place in one of the flats. Undertakers have just removed a dead body. And someone has to go in and clean up what remains. Matt knows almost nothing about what he'll find inside. As you can see, there's blood all over the floor. Blood all over the floor, there's blood up the walls. Oh, no, not when it'd be a better job, let's put it that way. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the bloke obviously passed away in the living room. Oh, well. The cleaners who deal with the nation's death scenes get to see the end result of some isolated lives. The occupant of this flat was a man living alone. Nobody has claimed his possessions. The council have had extreme cleaning specialists to come and clear out the flat. Matt doesn't just have to deal with the death scene. He also has to remove the mess left by the late resident's pets. The bloke had two dogs, and nobody came out for two weeks. Obviously, the dogs pooed everywhere you can see and weed everywhere, so that's what we're here to clean off. That's blood, all that is on there. We don't know how the poor fella died. For all the things that are in the house, I'd say it was a young bloke, I'd say he was in the age of 22, 25, something like that. Nine times out of 10, we don't really know what's happened. This is one of the badder ones I've had. Ooh. Decomposing bodies are being found in increasing numbers. In London alone, there are two every week. It's a big, big, big eye-opener to do a job like this. It's true what they say, you don't know what's around the corner. You live, you live your life day to day. Because you never know what's around the corner. Britain's cleaners also get an insight into lifestyles in the most exclusive residential areas. Where shiny possessions are the symbols of success. This neighborhood is home to some of the wealthiest people in the world. You can barely cross the streets for the huge number of expensive cars. I'm originally from the Midlands and you can go through days and not see anything seriously nice on the road. 
but here it's just the rarest cars are quite common here. If you're interested in cars, this is the place. Nice car. Gachan has turned his automotive obsession into a business. Down in this underground car park, where a parking space costs £6,000 a year. Britain's luxury cars demand a luxury car wash. So Kachan opened one to cater to London's high-flying elite. The kind of customers that come to me like everything, just perfect, not just cars. This is owned by a business lady. Every two or three days I see this car. It doesn't really need cleaning every two days, but the person who owns this, they like it perfect all the time. Gachan's car cleaning kit would put even the most well-equipped beautician to shame. I've got all kinds of different brushes to get into all the nooks and crannies, makeup wood pads for applying some of the products. Digital thermometer pads for removing blemishes in the paintwork. Various different chemicals and, and fluids here. The most expensive wax costs just over £8,000. But this level of attention doesn't come cheap. Gachan's most expensive treatment is a 14-day deep clean, costing an incredible £8,000. This £240,000 Ferrari has just arrived for a very thorough wash and brush up. But it isn't going to get the most expensive clean. This first bit is just a standard car wash, but I'll be cleaning this car for another 30 hours. For this treatment, the fee is a bit more modest. The owner will pay a mere £1,500. In East London, Jim's strategy for removing the pigeons is less delicate. He's trying to pick them off one by one with an air gun. Culling them is the only way to be certain that the problem isn't simply moved somewhere else. Cigar. But attempting the work at the top of an eight-foot ladder isn't proving terribly successful. Are you still not got one yet? <laughs> I'll tell you, mate, we're going to be here a long time if uh, we have to get one by one. With plenty of food available, feral pigeons are prolific breeders. In cities, they can reproduce several times a year. With this number, more drastic action is required. I think what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to do what we said initially. Drop the ceiling, yeah? Yeah. We're going to have to get this room clear, drop the ceiling. We're going to have to do it that way, mate. Removing the possessions from the upstairs rooms reveals that pigeons are not the only pests the reclusive resident has been living with. I'll tell you what, Jim. Yeah? It looks to me like we've had a few older Mickey mice boring into this mattress here, doesn't it? Yeah. Look, we've got Borho there. There, there. Hold on a minute, hold on a minute. There you go, bed bugs. They're associated with pigeons and pigeons' nests as well. And I think that is a bed bug. So right. we've got bed bugs, mice, cockroaches and pigeons by the looks of it, all in this one place. All we need is rats and we've got a full house, eh? Bingo. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's get this down there. Can't understand for the life of me why he wants to keep that. Just double check he wants to definitely keep that, yeah? She's only bed in the house though, Jim. I don't, I don't know. Listen, I'm not here to pass judgement, but it's, something's not right. The bed is no good now. He's changed his mind. So, yeah, the bed's going. We're going to take out this ceiling, get this room completely clear. Then we're going to move into the next door room and repeat the process. And then we'll have access to the pigeons. Gachan's cleaning technique is forensic. After the initial jet wash, he sets out to remove every last speck of dirt. 
Very, very important. Paintwork is completely clean. Otherwise, you're going to be polishing the dirt back into the paintwork and put more scratches in there. It's this level of perfectionism that draws the stream of wealthy clients with their cars. How's it going, Jack? How are you doing, good? Hello, Mr. Weller. From the sporty youngsters... Wow, this car needs a wash. It looks like you've been hunting. ..to the stately machines of the older multimillionaires. How's it going, anyway? Good weekend? Uh, yep, good weekend. I could do with a bit of a clean, but I'd look good again, couldn't I? Yeah, no problem. Yeah. Mr Hayward is a property developer with an extensive collection of exotic cars for Gachan to clean. People like myself, uh, we pride ourselves on our cars and the cleanliness of them and the way that they actually appear, and he's very good at making them appear absolutely perfect. No, it's an awesome car, awesome. This Rolls-Royce Phantom is worth almost £300,000, but it doesn't get much use. It only goes out for high days and holidays. It goes to Ascot once a year, it goes to Henley and all the uh, social events of the year, and it's good for that. You don't get moaned at by your wife when you sort of get, you get the keys of the Ferrari out or whatever it is, Lamborghini. They start moaning from the minute you leave the house to the minute you get there. But in this, of course, with a chauffeur, he just glides along and they're quite happy, so it always makes for a better day, really, when you take the Rolls-Royce and taking a Ferrari. There are over 100,000 multimillionaires in Britain. But their lifestyle is one that even the most successful cleaner would struggle to achieve. This isn't realistic, what this man's got here, that I'll ever get, but it, it doesn't bother me. To be honest, how do you know if someone who's multi-billionaire, 100 million pounds worth of cars, how do you know if he's happier than the person who's got a 20,000 pound car? You don't know. What wonderful surprises are in store for us today, I wonder. We'll probably be happy until we open the front door and we see what we've got to deal with. Then it'll be all downhill from there, won't it? Yes. In Oxfordshire, another dead body has been discovered. Matt and John are on their way to clean up. Yeah. Well, as far as I know, the man passed away in his bathroom on the bathroom floor. Yeah, we, do as know, far that, as yeah. I know. we know that much, yeah. Get ready for the smell, boys. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> la la la. Let's get some windows open. Yeah, look. <laughs> nice. Wow. Fly City. Yeah, you've got to have a stomach for this job. The total cost of keeping Britain clean is a whopping £9 billion a year. Hundreds of thousands of people earn a living dealing with our dirt. He's very, very house proud, aren't you, Sean? A clean wagon, a happy wagon, mate. The volume of muck and our demands for perfection have pushed the cleaning bill higher than it's ever been before. Britain's toilets used to send sewage straight into our rivers. But today we are filling them with a more modern mess. People use the River Thames like a litter bin, which is a shame. You always seem to get trainers, uh, and there's always one trainer or a flip-flop. I've never found a decent pair, which is a shame. Up and down the Thames are nine debris collectors. They trap our litter as it floats by. Captain Bubbles and his crew are responsible for removing it. Oh, 
Oh, Kevin, it's empty. Here's a full one. The units collect around 360 tonnes of rubbish every year. Much of it plastic packaging discarded by the public. A lot of people run along the river paths, but the amount of times I've seen somebody running along merrily, big bottle of water in their hand, as soon as they finish it up, they throw it over the, over the wall. Why can't they keep that empty bottle in their hand until they run past a little bin and throw it in there? People just think that, oh, they'll throw that in the river and it'll vanish. But it doesn't, but we have to pick it up. We might not worry much about what gets tossed into our rivers. But when it comes to our own property, we expect things to be kept just so. British households pay an average of £1,800 a year to have someone else keep everything as we like it. There is certain customers that don't like you to touch their cushions. They like them the way they've left them. Oh, we change so... them and we make them look a bit more how we think looks nicer, but they don't think so, so they like them the way they've put them. Sometimes clients set little traps for the girls. They want to know that they've got underneath everything. And we've had occasions where I've received a call saying that she knew that they hadn't cleaned under the rug because she had rolled the rug up and the night before and had put three peas under it and rolled it back again. They are so wary of being shortchanged in any way. The maids cost this household £70 every fortnight. They come in for a couple of hours to ensure the place is kept straight. OK, this is the test. Well, I don't matter what side it is, does it? It's not straight, because the bubble's not absolutely in the middle. That's it? Yep. Yeah. It's hot. The pest controllers in East London are facing their filthiest job ever. Getting anywhere near the pigeons is proving a Herculean task. They're covered in plaster dust, pigeon droppings, and whatever else the squatting birds have left behind. Oh. Oh, oh blimey. <laughs> and to cap it all, Jim's managed to lose a crown. It's good luck, isn't it? Do you know what? <laughs> I'll tell you what, mate, I think I'm going to move buff day four to a couple of days. You don't want to do that, do you? Yeah. Misses missus think you're having an affair. <laughs> <laughs> right, back in, yeah? Yeah. Jim's wife also works in the cleaning business, although her job is in a rather different branch. You've got a little bit of dryness at the moment. You need to get rid of all those dead skin cells and, and really allow all your products to penetrate in. Bev is a trained beautician. She is part of a multi-million pound industry built on cleansing the nation's skin. I'm just going to mm -hmm. muzzle you for a second. Mm -hmm. The problem is we live in such a polluted and dirty environment, really. Mm. So it means that every day you're subjected to pollution and mm. you know, general dirt and grime. At the end of the day after work, you do just want to wash your face because you can feel it on your skin. Do you know, Jess, I had a lovely cream winter coat mm. and I would say within the matter of a couple of days of wearing it backwards and forwards to work, yeah. it looked grey. Yeah, and that's on your skin. Yeah. It's this, ugh. I don't think our other halves can imagine what we do, can we? No. This is going to come as a big shock. I mean, Harry's partner is a university lecturer. Yeah. You yeah, know. She, she's a... Uh, She's got a couple of degrees and whatever else goes with it. It's funny, I mean, as a pest controller, you never associate yourself with, with people... Glamour and all that. And all that, yeah, because you think they're just never going to want to know. Do you think the British are good at cleaning themselves? Um, no. Some. <laughs> We Brits like to think of ourselves as a house-proud nation. But each of our homes is sending a constant stream of muck down the drains. Mick and Sean are often called to unblock the sewers of individual households. What they find 
gives them an intimate insight into the behaviour of the families inside. Noddies are the best. Jokes. When you, when you, go, to when you go to a customer's house and you've just got like a load of Jorex, what's blocking the chamber and, and you're like, the easiest way to put it to them is you've been having good time, have you? And they're like, they're not mine, they're not mine. Really, really embarrassed they get, don't they? Ah, oh, but those are the dancers, then. Uh, yeah, they're, yeah. <laughs> Three quarters of Britain's sewer blockages are caused by people putting things they shouldn't down their sinks and loos. Right, just let you know um, what could be blocking it. Is you've got the trees and what have you here. There could be roots in the manhole which is causing the problem. Right. Um, it could be things that are being flushed down there, you know. If they, I don't know if you flush wipes or anything like that down well, we've there. We've got a four-year-old, so he has been toilet training, so we've got the wipes, and right. it does say flushable. They do so we have, yeah. but I don't know if it's well, that. Well, it, it says on the packet that they're flushable, oh. and they're right, they are, they do flush down. Yeah. But they just don't tell you what can happen further down the line. Britain's households flush away enough water and waste to fill an Olympic swimming pool every two minutes. When you're trying to clear a backlog, it pays to take precautions. In layman's terms, it's to stop you either getting shit in your mouth or get your face, it, it, it's in the face with anything, you know? There's been plenty of times where I've been jetting and it comes back up on you and you get absolutely covered. The people that you're talking to, it's their poo. You know whose poo it is. It's, it's like, it's not everyone's, it's just theirs. So, you know, when you're letting them know, I'm covered in your feces. <laughs> it's, uh, it's rank, isn't it, mate? It's rank. The rubbish collectors on the Thames catch whatever debris floats by. Clearing them out can be a very grim task. Yes, good morning, sir. You know what's happening at the PDC unit at the tower. I'd appreciate a pass with caution, and I'll inform you when we've completed, and thank you. Floating amidst today's rubbish, the decomposing body of an unidentified man. Well, if we get a line round his waist, well, I'm not telling you, you get a line round his waist, yeah. Otherwise, you're going to start pulling bits his, off, aren't you? Underneath his arms. Yeah. Gonna... What we're going to do, boys, is uh, we're going to float a rubber stretcher underneath a deceased, pick the rubber stretcher up with our crane, and drop it gently on the stern of the police boat. Happy with that? Okay, yeah. Okay, right. let's go. We've got to reach this side. There are as many as 50 bodies found in the Thames every year, many of them suicides. So you're going to have to Bubbles often has to supervise their removal. Or you're going to have to drag him over the other side. Can you move him over there? That's it. Now, unfortunately, people seem to want to throw themselves in the river for strange reasons, and the units will, for want of a better word, collect them. Um, so it's not that unusual for us to find a, a body in there. Well, that's it, really. Rather grim, but... These things happen. John. Yeah. You got through? Yeah. I'll have it in two seconds. No, I want it now. In the Oxford flat, Matt and John are tackling one of their more unpleasant tasks. The death of the elderly male tenant had gone undiscovered for several weeks. It's a shame that you can't describe the smell on camera, because people watching at home would only see the dirt and the process. They'll never be able to get a sense of the smell. It's, 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 yeah, it's, you, can't, you can't explain the smell. It's a obviously. smell that gets inside your nostrils and doesn't go away. Uh, obviously, the longer something's left, the worse the smell becomes. You don't ever forget this one of death, ever. Almost half of Britain's over 75s live on their own, and Matt and John see the consequences. Oh, it's just a sad thing, really. You don't know how long he was here for. 
that's the sad part of it when you look, you think, oh, this is someone's life and like, he's supposed to have family because obviously we're aware now that we're having to wait for family decisions over certain things in the house. So he did have family, but it seems that he was here a little while before he was discovered. But then, how many people are like this in the country? In places by themselves and want to stay independent. So that's probably what has been his been his, like. So he want, he's wanted us to keep his independence, so he's obviously been left, been left here rather than being maybe put into a halfway house or a home or something. You do feel a presence around, though. It's weird. Very strange. It's almost like you're invading someone's privacy. It's really strange. But we've got a job to do. You have to come and do it. Please, yeah, no problem, pal. O2, 20.6. Yeah. H2S, 1. OK. Much of the rubbish we thoughtlessly flush down our toilets ends up having to be collected by people like Mick and Sean. It's just like one big paper mache pile of poo. But our sewers can be very dangerous places to go. Gas, 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 what reading do you have there, Dolly, when you come out? H2S, mate. Uh, H2S? Yeah, high, high, high readings. Uh, we're off on 10. H2S, hydrogen sulphide, is also known as sewer gas. It attacks the central nervous system. This gas can kill. Was you nervous, eh? No. 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 We're both all right, both safe, both still alive. It could have been a gas that way. You take two or three breaths, that could have been it. That could have been it over and done with, no more Mick or Sean. Will you do us a favour on my way back, if you give me a bell? Will you, uh, yeah, run me a bath? Britain has a population of 62 million and growing. And as our cleaners know, we are all dirtier than we think. Keeping our lives free of muck is an endless challenge, especially when there's high expectations to meet. The 34-hour clean of this Ferrari is a service that Gurchan calls a touch of perfection. He has two hours to complete it before the owner arrives. Will you ever see that in there, Gershan? Probably not. Just making sure it's all perfect. Mm -hmm. Gershan's meticulous attention is great for his clients. Hi, how's it going? Right there. But his girlfriend, Liana, lives with this every day. Your car's a mess. Sorry. Ah, cakes. Very nice. Yeah, is he, what's he like about the car? Is he, is he... He is a nightmare with the car. Absolute nightmare. He won't go out in it if it's dirty. So I, he always makes sure it's clean. But yes. on the old car, he would notice... Every time he washed it, he would notice something new. Yeah, and always. It was a nightmare for me. Always. Like that. Be in trouble. Just find a new scratch. Yeah. Few where there may have been a mark on the wheel. You know, there's always something I find. There's never a mark he, on the wheel. I think there was on one. Yeah. I think there was just one. You're making out as if I'm some kind of freak. No, you're not. <laughs> well, no. Yeah, yeah. To me, it's just normal. Things just should be right. That's true. The car right here had um, really bad bird, bird excrement where it had burnt into the paintwork. 
So is it still there? No, I'm just looking for it. I'm just making sure it's gone. So that's invisible, basically? Yeah, yeah, you can't see this. So why do you need to do it's invisible? Peace of mind. I want to make sure it's gone. It's got to be gone. Good shot. Jim and Harry have had to spend three days in the house full of pigeons. Well done, mate. This is what we're here to do, is to clear this lot out. I mean, this has just been going on for way too long now. But the brutal work of culling the birds is now almost complete. Cracking. Well done, mate. This is what happens in a world where dirty problems aren't tackled. When you do this for a living, people just think that you don't consider the animal's welfare. But you've got to look at the overall picture. And this guy has had all these pigeons living in here and it, it, it had to go, you know, he couldn't carry on living like this. It, there's no way that you could have left this man living in these conditions. Hopefully this will get him on the straight and narrow, get him on the mend. Jim, is that all of them? I thought we had most of them out, but there's obviously a couple that had tucked themselves away. All right, that's him taken care of. I always say this, men designed these radiators because they are so awkward to clean and they take their time consuming. You can't just wipe over them. You've got to go in every single groove and then you've got to work your way behind them. People don't respect cleaning in the same way that they would respect a builder because everybody thinks they can clean. This smells good. People will give a cup of tea or a coffee to the um, builders or the gardener or, and they'll walk past the ladies as if they're not there. I think people do look down on cleaners. When you say to someone, oh, I'm a cleaner, they go, oh, like, as if to say, well, that's a, a meaningless job, basically, but it isn't. You do take it personally, yeah, don't you? Do. You? Now, you? You learn to not take things personally and just get on with you. Everyone has to clean a home and have a clean home, and it's just that we're being paid to clean your home. So I think it's quite an important job. Lovely. Good job. Good stuff. The toothpicks get the final bit of polish out. There's no point in me spending 30 hours on the car. And then you find a tiny bit of polish here. Someone's here, Gertz, I think. Might be him. Hi. Have you come to collect the 599? Sorry? Have you come to collect the 599? Yeah. Yeah, just stay there one moment. Okay. If he doesn't want you to see it, just share. Okay. okay. I'm good. Yep. How's it going? Wow. Good, thanks. How are you? All right, good to see you. Let's see what you've done here. Well done, Gertz. Very nice. Yeah, it's very soft. Any scratches left? Um, <laughs> 50 pounds for every scratch you find. Really? Yeah. I'll keep looking then. <laughs> <laughs> The problem is, when you like things perfect, you're always looking for perfection and it's quite difficult to find perfection. But that's not with my, just, just my occupation, but just life in general. Our cleaners get a very different picture of Britain. Facing the things that we don't want to see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're around all hours to clean up after us. And to deal with the dirty problems we try to hide. And what's happening now, they're creatures of habit, they're just going to keep returning. They're not going to get any shelter because the roof's going to be made watertight. 
Yeah, so this lot now, they'll go and find somewhere new to live, and then that'll be another job for us. Yeah, there's a nice hole in between <laughs> next door and the door after, actually. Is there? Yeah, can you just see? Oh, yeah? Yeah. Where that little ridge tile comes so down. So I'll pop a card two pop doors down just before we leave, yeah. yeah. 